Hey guys, Stas here. In this video, I'm going to do a review of my experience with the SS Brewtech Uni Tank 7 gallon. Let's get to it. Sponsored by New Era Brewing, though I will say thank you for kindly sending me the Uni Tank uh, at the same time that I bought my uh, brew bucket. Uh, so big thanks to Gary and the team there at New Era Brewing. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this isn't a paid review. In fact, when I initially contacted him about getting a review unit, he was very upfront and saying, "We don't do any paid videos. We don't pay anyone to review our stuff." And I said, "No, no, no that's fine." I'm just interested in having a play and seeing how it goes. So uh, today actually the uni tank has been shipped back to New Era Brewing so I was able to get uh, a bit of time with it, not a hell of a lot. I was going to do an unboxing, uh, in fact I shot an unboxing but my three-year-old kept getting in the way. He was just as excited as me to get into that big cool looking box. So I didn't end up editing it. So if you want to see an unboxing, maybe let me know in the comments and I'll put one together. Anyway, so uh, I did a live stream of me sort of cleaning the, the fermenter. Uh, I did one brew in it just before Christmas, then Christmas happened, then we moved house. Anyway, so I've only had one brew in it, but it was a Saison and I, got, I felt I got a reasonable feel about how the unit functions and how it is to use. So what are the specs? Uh, just looking at my notes here, it comes with, it's actually quite feature rich. Uh, it comes with uh, two butterfly valves, uh, one for your dump valve, one for your racking port. It should be noticed that the, known that the racking port has been reduced, so it's not a full one and a quarter inch butterfly valve. Um, it comes with a, a ball valve for your uh, blow-off tube. And it comes with a sample port. It comes with a carbonation stone, uh, a little thermo well for a temperature probe, um, and it comes with a, a PRV. Well, it's not really a PRV. It's more of a safety release. Um, it's rated to 30 psi. So if it gets up close to that, that's going to um, blow off the pressure. And also comes with a chilling coil uh, to hook up to your cooler or chiller, temperature controller, uh, for lack of a better word, because that's what it is. Also comes with a pressure gauge so you can monitor the pressures uh, going on inside the tank. So what does the uni tank allow you to do? Uh, well, number one, it's a it's basically like a shrunk down version of a pro unit. I mean. Anything that the pros can do, more or less, uh, with their fermentation tanks, you can do with this. You can use it, use the pressure tank to do a closed transfer, so you can push the beer out using CO2. Uh, you could, you can use it to ferment under pressure uh, up to 30 psi. Uh, you can dump the trub or collect, harvest the yeast from either the racking port or the dump valve. Uh, you can rack the trub off the bottom of your beer and let it to carbonate in um, the vessel. So you, if you don't want to ferment under pressure, you can ferment out as normal and then connect up to that carbonation stone and carbonate your beer. And it's a, it's a seven gallon fermenter. Um, yeah, so that's what it allows you to do. So the recommended retail for uh, this seven gallon uni tank at the time of filming this is 1,399 Australian dollars and or if you're in the States it's 899 US dollars which translates to roughly I think it's 1,240 Australian dollars so you know eh, it's pretty comparable by the time you've got to get it from the United States to Australia. Uh, the packaging uh, that it came in, I can't really comment too much on the official retail packaging because this unit was a demo unit. It was at ANHC, I believe. So it was missing a couple of things, unfortunately. I think it was three tri clamps, uh, one of the tri clamp seals. Uh, I think that was 
the main things that were missing from what would normally be in the box. But, you know, it came packaged uh, well and it was well protected and it arrived without dints uh, and any other damage. So that's, I was impressed with that. So build quality is good. Uh, the butterfly valves that, that come with, they're really heavy and chunky and you can take them all apart. I didn't actually disassemble any of them, but they look, they look as if you know they're put together with screws and bolts that would all come out if you wanted to do it regularly. You can pull it all apart, disassemble it all, give it a really good clean. And that's one of the benefits of you know getting these, these big industrial, well, it's basically what the pros use. You can really get into every nook and cranny and give it a really good clean. The unit that I had in the blow-off uh, tube at the top, I did notice the slight bit of, I guess it was maybe excess uh, solder or um, a bit of excess metal that was poking out um, that wasn't filed away. Um, so, you know, very minor, but that's a potential area for some bacteria to, to grow. Uh, all the other stuff, it might have just been a one-off defect. I, I don't know, I've only seen one but it was just right at the top. It's unlikely to ever touch beer, so it's probably not an issue. The rest of the um, conical tank, it all looked pretty good in terms of its weld quality. Um, and yeah, everything seemed to be operational and smooth. So how did it go during the fermentation? Uh, I brewed a Saison, as I said, and I did a no-chill straight into the fermenter. Well, <laughs> more or less straight into the fermenter with a couple of splashings about getting it out of the cube. Um, but, you know, I fermented it at, a, at ambient temperature because uh, although it has the coil in there, um, I didn't have the chiller unit, which is an extra 250 bucks uh, if you want the heating and cooling unit. I think you can just get the cooling unit for around uh, 150. I'll put the I'll put the exact retails and show you the links um, on the screen. Uh, I did a kind of a ghetto hack with uh, my grandfather to, to crash chill it down. It was I didn't really let it run for long enough to, for it to be effective. It was more of a proof of concept. So basically I filled up my grandfather with uh, ice and water and I jerry-rigged some connections uh, from, the, from the work pipe out into the coil and then recirculated it through the grandfather. And I was able to get it from, uh, I think it was 26 degrees, uh, the beer from 26 degrees, all the way down to, I think it was around five or six degrees in about two hours. Uh, so it's, it's reasonably good. I can imagine that if you had uh, a fridge or an esky with ice water and you wanted to use the, the um, temperature controller to, or even, a, doesn't have to be the SS Brutec version. You can do it very easy with like an ink bird or something rigged up to a, a pump. And there's lots of ways that you could you could do it. Um, it would be able to chill the beer and things. Unfortunately, my fridge wasn't quite big enough. I don't have the biggest fridge. It's actually a freezer. I think it's only, it's only just 40 centimeters wide. And as you can see with the photo that I'll put up here, um, it didn't quite fit and so I, I, if it did I would have just put the whole thing in the fridge and let the fridge control the heating and the cooling of the unit. The sample port uh, works fine when the beer is not under pressure but just the the little nozzle and it's just the same thing as uh, a keg fridge uh, or, or a keg tap. If you're not running much line there's not going to be a lot of resistance as the beer comes out under pressure and I took a couple of gravity readings under pressurized fermentation and the the sample glass just was 50 plus percent foam because it just came out of there and I barely had it cracked. I know that this is a totally different price range and everything but I know that the uh, the Spiedel um, uni tanks they actually have a coil uh, of pipe of that's really thin and long to get over that. Uh, I haven't used them, so I don't know if they successfully get over that, but uh, they put a little bit of coils, as a bit of resistance, so that when you are fermenting under pressure, you shouldn't get as much foam in your sample. So that's just a little niggle about the, the sample port on the uni tank when using under pressure. When it was not under pressure, it was fine. This unit 
is a heavy unit. I normally have to move my fermenters from where I brew to my fermentation fridge, and this unit on its own weighs well, probably about 10, 15 kilos. So when you put 25 kilos worth of beer in it, it's big and heavy. There's no real handles apart from the legs uh, to lift it up with. Uh, I ended up shifting it on one of the, the moving trolleys. It's not ideal though, and I ended up, that's part of the reason why I did uh, the no-chill method so I could take the beer in a container and uh, safely, in terms of my back, um, get it into where it was going to be fermented without uh, needing to carry that heavy thing full of beer. The other thing, it's a positive and a potentially a negative. Um, because everything comes apart, it's great. I love the tri-clamp. Sorry, the triclove uh, fittings in the fact that you can just take them off, clean them all, they're really easy to clean, everything's super easy to clean. But God, there are a lot of parts and on this little body, they're so close together. Um, so, that, I mean, for, I feel that for one keg of beer or one keg plus a couple of bottles, there's an awful lot of cleaning uh, going on in this unit. Uh, also, the size of this unit means that uh, those big butterfly valves, there's actually a, just a tiny bit of room of clearance between the extremities of the movement of the, uh, the racking arm. And I realized I had my uh, orientation of the butterfly valve incorrect, so I was operating them both so that they were parallel to the floor where all the pictures, as you can see, they have them. So the dump valve is vertical or perpendicular to the floor. Um, and I'm assuming that that's just to make it a little bit easy, um, easier to use. I did find that all those valves and taps all in the one kind of area, so close together on a small unit, kind of did get away in the way. And it looks kind of a bit odd, these massive butterfly valves on this what is a fairly small fermentation vessel? Conclusion time. Uh, I had a good experience. It's a great bit of kit. Um, a, few little, a few little things that I thought I might mention. If you are thinking of picking up one, just I want to let you try and go into it with, a, with an open mind of what you're up for. It's a great bit of kit at, at $1,399. It doesn't include um, adapters, for um, hoses off your blow-off valve. I mean, they're only like $10, $15 each, but you know, you'll need to get those. You'll see my jerry-rigged, uh, really ghetto airlock valve because I realized that I didn't have one that fitted, uh, which was basically an old milk carton which had been cut off with an, with an Oki strap <laughs> around the top. Yeah, anyway. Uh, you also don't have a racking port um, tri-clamp and a hose barb fitting. Now that's probably because they, different people have different setups, different size hoses, and no matter which one they included, they're always gonna have people going, well, I need to buy another one, so they probably just decided not to include it and have that as an accessory that people buy. Just know that you're gonna have to buy it to get the beer out, unless you wanna splash all your carefully fermented and no oxygen, then you don't want to just spray it out of the pickup tube. Uh, you also need some sort of uh, fermentation control. Now, my freezer, it's too small for this unit. Uh, you can get a, a secondhand fridge, and a lot of people are starting to use that, um, pretty cheap. The uh, pump that the SS Brewtech make, uh, which does the heating and the cooling, and sorry, not the pump, the the controller which has a pump and a heater on it. You need to buy that for, I think it's $250, roughly Australian. And uh, you also need an ESCII and, or a source of insulated cold uh, water. So you could do an ESCII, you could have a fridge with, with just a bucket of water in there and the fridge keeps it cold all the time, but that's an additional cost. Um, so you'll need, you'll need those extra accessories and you probably want a, uh, a CRP, a clean in place spray ball, which you'll also need a pump for. Most people who are wanting to spend $1,300, $1,400 on a fermenter, they probably have that gear or it's just such a, a small extra cost that they're not gonna worry about it, but 
just keep that in mind. And yeah, obviously this, this is a, a fairly large fermenter for 27 litres and uh, you'll, you'll need a big fridge if you want to go that route as well. Um, what it doesn't have, it doesn't have uh, etched markings on the inside, so there's no real way of knowing how heavy it is. I mean, um, you could put the fermenter on scales, fill it based on weight, but it would have been nice to see some etched uh, lines, just even if you're going in, just so you can have a rough idea. I know the, S, uh, the SS Brewtech brew buckets um, do have those etchings, so yeah. So that pretty much wraps up my review of the SS Brewtech 7 gallon uni tank. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you've used them, if you uh, have any thoughts about what I say. Do you think I've completely missed the mark or uh, do you, does it sound reasonable what I've said? <laughs> Hopefully it does. Um, yeah, so big thanks again to Gary from New Era Brewing for sending me the unit for review. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing with it, and uh, again, thank you for indulging me in my curiosity. So, until the next video, guys, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.